So, today, ladies and gentlemen, we'll begin our saga to build and paint a Games Workshop Warhammer Age of Sigmar start collecting skinks. Part of the Seraphon line, I'll show it to you under here in this long sweeping shot. Whoa! So, anyway, this comes with, as you can see, it's, it's hard to show you, but it's uh, three Terradron Riders, a Basilodon, some skinks, either way, you're, you're gonna see it. You're gonna, you're gonna be able to see it all. I'll, I'll put it up here. There you go. That's what we're gonna be building. That's what we're gonna be working on today. Skinks. Uh, yes, I actually do have uh, these cutters, um, which are from the uh, Gundam uh, model. I really do like them. I think I've got sort of a mix of uh, Citadel stuff, uh, the Games Workshop tools, and then other tools as well. Um, and, and at the end of the day, like, some are a little bit better than others, but it's really about like how you use them than the tool itself. But we'll, we'll get into that. So anyway, first thing we need to do, and uh, I think what we should do is just open the box, right? Which uh, I haven't done yet, so let's, let's check that out. So, when you need to start collecting, as the table shakes and shivers, what you're going to see, and move our tools out of the way here, it's important too to have one of these little plastic um, sort of like plastic vinyl mats. You can see mine is very well worn because uh, you're gonna be cutting things, you're gonna be painting things, you're gonna be gluing things, you're gonna get little bits of plastic everywhere. And so you wanna have something to kind of catch some of it so you can throw it out easier uh, as well. So there is that. So we're gonna look in the box and then we're gonna go over what tools we need. Yeah, um, well the thing is, Bull Skunk, there's a lot of people I know that like don't really play the game, but they're just really into building and painting minis. So you don't need to play to be part of it. There's I mean, oftentimes, like, I definitely don't have a lot of time to go and play games, but I do find a little bit of time for building and painting here and there, so for me, most of the hobby is the building and painting stuff, even though I do like playing the game, so it really depends. So in the box, looks like this. Here's what we see. Let's go ahead and uh, do that. I have the focus set up so that when I start working on it, it'll be right, so I'll just have to lift it from the meantime. Like I said, work in progress, guys. Anyway, start collecting skinks. This book will have all of your guides to building all of the different models and things like that. I think what I want to do first is I kind of want to build this guy first. I think this is going to be the guy that we're going to base the uh, the show around, is building the Basilodon with this particular weapon on top. That'll be cool to go through. But underneath this, you get a bag with different um, bases. These are going to be for the Skinks. These are, I believe, 25 millimeter bases. Some of them have slots in the bottom. Uh, some of them don't. Uh, the skinks are a little bit older uh, models and a lot of those had that slot to kind of uh, make them stick on the base a little bit more or a little bit better And then we have these sprues. So this is essentially if you're brand new to this This is what all the models come from you can see all the different little pieces on the sprues and then near all the pieces you can see there are numbers so 41 11 these are parts of the Basilodon if you look and see right here that face it's a lot like the side of this face. It's because that's what it is. So this sprue and this sprue, I believe, are going to be our Bastelodon sprues. Certainly looks that way. So these are the two we're probably going to use today. I'm going to set those aside for the moment. You can see the sprues for the other models as well. You can see the wings of some of the Pterodon riders or the Ripper Dactyls. You can make them in different ways. And then uh, you've got some of the uh, flyer bases for that. So these stick on the base, and then uh, you stick the flying model on top. You'll see those clear stands sometimes. You can always make your own as well. A lot of people do a lot of modifications. These are going to be the stands for the flying guys. Put those aside. And uh, then you've got other little uh, parts as well. Here are some of the skink parts. I believe this comes with uh, 12 or 10 skinks. Something like that. But uh, this is what those sprues are. You can see some little weapons there. Multiples of these. And uh, then this is going to be the Skink uh, Priest as well. Yep. So this is going to be a single hero model. So we'll maybe build this one second and then get to the Skinks in the end. And this is going to be the uh, base for the Basilodon. So we need this as well. So, And again, like uh, the size of the base is important because it has an impact in uh, how the game is played. The game is played where distances are measured uh, from base to base in Age of Sigmar. So you really can't swap the bases themselves around too much. You can do a lot of modification with height on the uh, the models that go on top, but you can't really change the size. Uh, if you want to do something, you will use a different piece than this plastic piece right here. It has to be the same size. 
to use it in the game. The flyer stands, depending on the model, yeah, these can be like a little bit awkward balance-wise, um, but you can do things to sort of shore that up. Uh, I do a lot of modifying to some of my models when the, it comes to flying and things like that. I'll show you a quick example really quick before we get started. But here's a model with a flyer base from the Caradron Overlords line. And so I use the flyer base, but I use some thermoplastic gel, or thermoplastic beads, to make sort of a cool smoke contrail to kind of make the base a little bit more sturdy and add an effect with that too. So this is already getting beyond what we're, the purpose of this particular show is, but just a little example of what you can do to kind of change the bases. But uh, anyway, let's get back to building the models. There's a, there's a little finished product uh, thing for you. Oh, I'll show you this really quick first before we get started. I'm excited about this. I'm almost done with the Battle Sister I was streaming the other day. We've got some of the uh, text on the banners and things like that. I've got some of the shading done on the cloak and things. So this model is almost ready to go. But again, besides the point, we're gonna build some models today. So let me put this stuff back in the box. These are the sprues that I won't need for now. Mostly the uh, Terradron Riders and the Skinks. I'm gonna keep the, uh, the Hero Skink and the Basilodon sprues separate. Um, actually, I'll just put this back in here for now. And uh, there you go. Let's just set this aside. And so let's go over the tools that we're going to use for uh, building these. I'll put the uh, the sprues right here so you can keep an eye on that. Again, like the focus is set so that when I hold things up, when I'm actually working on it, it'll be in focus. So apologies for it being a little bit out of focus. I'm using like a nice webcam for this particular thing, for my hobby cam, so it doesn't have a great depth of focus. Hopefully I'll get something in the future that's going to... Um, make that better but for now we're working with, with what we got first thing you need is uh clippers so here's a, a pair of clippers i've used for years and years uh, since before getting into warhammer actually when i used to build a lot of gundam models i really like these because they've got a nice point on the end so you can get in there and really like get little detailed uh cuts it's important that they stay sharp i do need to kind of like find a way to sharpen these at this point but they're still useful for now another tool that i find extremely useful is uh from citadel this is a mold line remover. So uh, I'll see if I can find an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, some kits are better about this and some kits are worse, but basically what you're gonna find is on some kits, here's a good example right here, on some kits, see if you can see this on the webcam, uh, it's a little bit tough to see, but there's little lines like right here. If you see a little line kind of in the middle of that, that uh, little like spike on some of these. When the plastic uh, sprue is made, there's like a little seam where the, the uh, pieces of the mold sort of meet. And so this tool, what this does, is you kind of scrape it along there. It's not very sharp. It's just got a very nice edge, but it's not gonna cut you or anything like that. If you scrape it along there and it removes those mold line tools and it works really, really well. So I really recommend one of these. It's easy to use. It's, it's extremely helpful, very valuable tool. So, the, uh, I'll just move this aside so you can see it. So we got our clippers, we've got our mold line tool remover, and then you have various sanding things. So these are, I've got a little bit of paint on these over the years, but these are basically used for sanding down edges, uh, sanding down areas where you cut the sprue off of the piece of the model. I've got one that has three flat surfaces, which I really like, and I need to clean some paint off of apparently. And then I've got this round one, which is really nice when the, uh, sprue is attached at like a curved sort of edge and you want to get like a, a nice sort of finish with that. So you've got these. These are a little bit rougher grain. And then I've got this one, uh, which I believe is from Citadel, from Games Workshop. That's uh, got a rounded edge and it's got a flat edge um, and it kind of tapers and, and this has got a bit of a finer grain so you can get sort of a smooth surface. I don't use this one quite as much, but I still do find a use for it once in a while. So there you go. Yeah. So these are all the basic tools. I like to use when I'm building models. Um, optional, I don't end up using them a lot, but a tweezers is sometimes nice to have if you're trying to put like a really tiny piece onto a model, that's helpful sometimes. And another thing that's indispensable, you need the glue, right? So this is just basic Citadel plastic glue, you can get it at any Warhammer store. Um, and what this does is when you put it on two pieces of plastic, it actually semi melts the plastic and uh, bonds it. So after it sets, after it dries, it essentially makes two pieces of plastic become one piece of plastic. Uh, it sticks in a matter of seconds usually, but then doesn't really dry completely and bond completely for about, it seems like about a day or so. Um, you can still work with the model while it's drying, 
but you kind of want to be easy with it until you're about like a, the next day and then everything is, is really solid. Um, I'll show you an example of a model I just built the other day, another skink model coincidentally from a, a different start collecting, but this is going to be one of the big hero models in the skink army. And so this guy here, I added a little bit underneath this arm to make him a little bit more stable. Um, but all these pieces, some of them are, they are attached to very tenuous ways it looks like, but because essentially the plastic glue makes it into one piece of plastic, it sticks very well. So here's an example of a finished model right here. But let's get building. So first thing you gotta do, I, mean, I usually like to put the sprues I'm working with off to the right. And I put the uh, the thing I'm building off to the left, uh, or I'm putting the the guide off to the left, and then I go from there. So um, the microphone's kind of in the way, but you can see Basilodon. Here we go. It's a starting port right there. So as you often do, you need to start with pieces uh, one and two. So I'm going to set this off to the side. I'll set it right here so you can kind of keep a, an eye on it, I guess. And we need to find pieces one and two, which of course, not very hard. Uh, you just look for the number. There's the two right there. And with this piece, where is it? There is the one. So there you go. So here's an important thing to learn. When you're cutting out the, the plastic pieces from the, uh, the basic sort of sprue. This is called a sprue, by the way. Uh, S-P-R-U. It's a piece of plastic that the pieces of the model are attached to. It's, it's manufactured this way, and so you have to cut the pieces off to put it together. Uh, what you want to do, I see a lot of people when they're first starting, they're cutting right next to the model. They're just cutting it like right off the sprue like this. The, the problem with doing that is that you can't really get the best angle to remove the piece that's right attached to the model, and you're going to get a lot of unnecessary marks and things like that. So uh, on the finished piece, so little depressions, divots and things. So what you really wanna do is you wanna leave a little bit of space. So if I cut this piece, I'm gonna cut it like right there, see? So you've got a little bit of room and we're gonna go and cut these little areas off later on. But that's the first part is to go through and cut a little bit away from the uh, actual piece of plastic itself so that what you're left with is a piece with uh, these little things attached to it, right? And so now what you can do, now I can maneuver this and I can get in there much better and make much cleaner cuts. So you're gonna see little marks here, but it's not gonna be, it's gonna be much more flush with the plastic. So then go around, cut all this stuff in. I like to sort of push down and uh, twist a little bit when I make the cut. I find that uh, my experience is that by cutting it like that, it makes this a little bit smoother, this area. And don't worry about this white dot because either there's gonna be glue on it or there's gonna be paint on it. So you're not gonna see this stuff. So don't worry about that so much. But anyway, cutting these. Some people I know like to have uh, one uh, clippers for clipping off the sprue, the big cuts, and then another sharper clippers for doing the ones close to the miniature. I used to do that too, but after a while I kind of got lazy and I don't think it makes that big of a difference. So you don't need to worry about it too much. So anyway gonna finish the rest of this so now what we're left with is this model here and you can see there's like little bits so here's a little bit left there and so what you want to do is just take one of your sanding pieces and semi carefully go through and just sand that last piece off and you can use the little tips sort of go in and get the little extra stuff out right so even though you might still kind of like see a little mark there, when you run your finger over it, it's gonna be nice and smooth. So that when the primer goes over it, when the paint goes over it, you're not gonna see these like marks from where the sprue is attached. So go through in each piece and just go through there and run it over that. And then just, I usually just like to check it with my finger, brush some of the dust away and make sure it's smooth. Um, areas like this, you can tell this flat surface, there's gonna be something glued to this. So in this situation, you want to sand it down so that when you do put the piece on here, it's going to be flush. So even though you're not going to see this part, still sand this part down because you don't want big gaps in, uh, in the model, right? So that's why I'm even going to sand down these areas here, if that makes sense to you. And obviously, once you get good at it, 
This process goes much quicker than what I'm going to show you today. That's why I'm kind of only, I think, going to do one model because it's going to take a little bit longer doing the explanations. But uh, once you get good at it, it goes pretty quick. So moving right along to piece number two. And then we're going to get to the gluing. And man, like the first time I put a model together, I was so afraid to glue it because most of us in our lives don't have a ton of experience with gluing things. And so, you know, we're used to glue being like messy and it's going to get everywhere and it's going to be a big problem. I mean, maybe all my glue memories are from elementary school, but hey, I don't think that's too uncommon, you know? We paste things together in elementary school, but unless you, you know, work in sort of a hobbying field or work in some sort of uh, manufacturing business, you don't end up doing a lot of gluing in day-to-day in -day life, right? So, something to kind of think about. So anyway, going through, clipping off these pieces again, trying to make sure I'm nice and flat against the piece of the model itself, and then going to do a little bit of sanding as well. So you notice here, I don't know if you can see it on the webcam, there's this little line here. That's that mold line I was talking about. So normally what I would do is I would take this mold line remover tool and I'll, I'll try it. Um, I would use just the regular sanding thing on scales like this, but I'll show you a little bit of it on just this one scale. But what you're seeing is you're seeing me sort of like scrape against that. And it doesn't damage the model or anything like that. It just gets rid of that mold line. And again, you might still see a little bit of something there, but the important thing is that you don't feel anything there, right? Now, because it's a bunch of different scales, um, I'm actually going to go in and use the uh, little like sanding implement instead to get rid of some of these. And you can decide how obsessive you want to be about this kind of thing. Um, I'm being a little bit more obsessive than usual about it because I'm doing a stream and I want to kind of show you the, the ideal way right, to build your models. But the other thing I can kind of think about is this is going to be the bottom of the model. Nobody's going to really see this. So do I really need to remove this mold line? Probably not. But for the sake of the example, there you go. A little bit of a, a little bit of demonstration with that. And I'm looking to see, here we go, another sort of sprue area. I think nine times out of ten I end up using the round um, sanding thing because it just fits best in a lot of the little spaces. It looks the most natural when you sand things. How's that on the webcam? That's not so bad. Cool. Good, good. I usually end up blowing a lot of the, the dust off that as well. Cool. And again, on the interior part, where you know there's glue that's going to be there, you want to make sure you get that really flat because then uh, it's going to be... Oops, I missed a piece. Look at that. Because uh, then you, you don't want um, big gaps in your model from it not gluing together flushly. It's like part of a tongue here, too. It's a bit odd. Alright, take a drink out of my delicious tea, by the way. This stuff is amazing. So when I'm on uh, when I'm on camera a lot when I'm speaking I like to drink this tea that's um, it's basically just ginger extract and honey and hot water and it's it's so good it feels amazing on your throat um, and it's it's good for your voice and and uh, it's awesome so anyway a little little aside about the tea I'm I'm drinking here today but uh, yeah and we are doing solar engine Uber we are indeed doing solar engine because Arc of Sotec was good before but in the new rules the solar engine is pretty sick so. What I like to do before I actually do the gluing is I like to just test fit the piece first. I just like to put it together, kind of see how it fits together and feels. And there you go, that's how it's going to look um, when it's glued. And you just kind of want to make sure you know what surfaces are going to actually need glue. So I'm going to need glue all along here, basically. So here we have our Citadel plastic glue. And uh, it's always good to have a bit of paper towel around. Um, I know, and, and this is paper towel, not TP. I'm not, I'm not wasting valuable toilet paper that's in such short supply in America right now on this model. No, this is just regular paper towel, which is still, I think, in stock anyway. But you might get a little bit of extra glue on things, and so you want to be able to clean it up. Uh, don't worry, this is not super glue. It's not going to glue your fingers together. It's not going to hurt you unless you drink it, which I wouldn't recommend. I don't know what happens if you drink it, but it's probably not good. But uh, either way, it's, it's not like going to... Like, you're not going to go to the ER if you get any of this on your fingers, basically. Um, but uh, still, it's nice to have the paper towel around 
to clean some of the excess off. So I'm not going to put like uh, the glue along the entire edge. Like I'm not going to run it and put one solid line of glue. I'm just going to kind of put dots here and there, as you can see. So I think that's all I need for this piece. I might have gone, oh yeah, I went a little bit too far, but that's okay. If you get a little bit of extra plastic glue in a place you're not ready to glue yet, you can just kind of like dab it, wipe it off. That's fine. It'll make the plastic a little bit soft there for the moment, but it's not a huge deal. So then you just kind of fit it. And you don't need to press really hard or anything like that. You don't need to like, you know, grip it and just really like clench to get it to glue. As you can see, like after a couple seconds already, it's it's stuck there. Like I could pull it apart really easily, but it's not going to go anywhere, right? I could have used a little bit of glue down here. Actually, I didn't notice. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually glue on the inside a little bit. I'm going to be a little bit messier with that, and that's going to sort of bond that area a little bit, even though I don't have any glue right in there. That's that's fine. We've got this huge area that's glued here. This isn't the end of the world. And I think that's a good lesson to kind of keep in mind when you're building these, is that if you screw up, it's really not the end of the world. Uh, it's very, very difficult to screw up these models enough that they're ruined. Um, I have never done that, despite screwing up a lot. Most things are fixable. Even if you glue the wrong piece to the wrong piece, you just pull it apart again, dab it a little bit with a, a paper towel, and, and then go back to it. So anyway, first two pieces together. We've got the body and very weirdly the tongue just kind of sticking out. It's very disturbing. Um, it actually goes like this. This is the bottom. This is the top. <laughs> and it's, it's quite disturbing looking right now. I, I will admit it's a little bit odd. But yeah, so anyway, there's that. What I uh, recommend, too, is when you're done using your glue for a piece, put the cap back on. You don't need to like put it on super tight, but just put it on because the tip of this plastic glue does dry out pretty quickly. And um, it won't dry out the glue inside, but it'll make it so that the glue won't be able to come out of the metal tip. So definitely put this back on if you're going back to cutting pieces for a little bit. Uh, if it gets stuck, uh, sometimes you can kind of like pull the glue out of the top. It'll glue into one piece. You can kind of pull it up and free it if it's really stuck up. Um, and I, I hesitate to recommend this, but uh, if you you can very very carefully take a lighter and just kind of run it along the uh, the edge here, and it'll actually uh, burn uh, the glue out of there. Now keep in mind, this is extremely flammable, so do not do that while this is attached to this bottle. Take if you're gonna do that, take the metal piece out and then do it. And make sure uh, your hands are in a safe place as well. But yeah, please, no flames anywhere near this. Uh, it will explode, and that would not be great. So, yeah. Take a drink of my tea. Oh, the ginger is kind of spicy, actually. So if I take too big of a drink, it's like, whoa. But anyway, piece number two here. As you can see, we need 11, 9, and 20. So let's find it again. I think that's going to be around here. Usually, as you can see, the nines will have a little... A little underline underneath them so you don't get them confused with sixes. So we know that we need that one. Doesn't really matter what order you clip them out in. Uh, so 9, 11, and 20, right? Yeah, so the other ones, it looks like the other ones are on the other sprue. Sometimes you're going to need to go to a different sprue um, to find it. So let's find it here. Here's 11. All right. There you go. And 20. 20 is kind of a long, thin piece. It's a little bit of a where's Waldo sometimes to find the pieces on here. But you will find it if you keep looking, he told himself. Uh, let's see. 20. Um, <laughs> it's definitely... Ah, here it is. Aha! It was right in front of me the whole time. You guys probably saw it before I did, actually. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and yeah, I guess I'll say if, if you do like the content, yeah, please sub. I'm going to be doing a, a whole series of this stuff. We're, again, we're going to take it from this to fully painted, completed model uh, like this guy. Not, uh, not the same thing. Obviously, this is not a, a lizard, but uh, he is a completed model. So we're going to go from that to that. So it's going to be going to be neat. Anyway, uh, now let's go ahead and clip these pieces off. And again, I think it's important to try to push down into the plastic a little bit, like kind of push down a little bit like that so that you get as close to the plastic as you can and you have less to sand off later. It's kind of a, it's kind of a skill uh, that you'll kind of like learn as you, as you go along. So if your first models don't turn out perfectly, 
it's not the end of the world. Um, you're, they'll, they'll look better. Uh, my first models, I totally messed up so much. I put like the wrong weapons on guys. I put some of them on the wrong bases because I didn't understand that there were different base sizes you need to pay attention to. And I just screwed it up so completely. But it's okay. I was able to fix stuff I needed to fix and uh, play with the models and have a good time with them anyway. So that's fun. And, you know, while the building and painting part of doing this is definitely one of the best parts of the hobby, the uh, I kind of see it as like a really cool building and painting hobby where you get to play an awesome game at the end of it. So I kind of see the game as sort of like a bonus, honestly, because um, I'm, I'm the artsy-fartsy type, so I like, uh, I like this kind of stuff. Generally a little bit more. Got some of the cool, like, uh, back area here. So anyway, looking through that, and I'm kind of examining a little bit for those mold lines, if there's any I need to remove, but I gotta say, this is pretty good, like not too many mold lines to, uh, to worry about on this one. And again, if you're just joining us, when I say mold lines, I mean those little seams that you see uh, from the manufacturing process when you're making a, a piece of plastic on a sprue like this. You'll get some lines, like uh, right here, uh, if you can see it, there's like a little line that goes like that, see? That is that is a mold line, and uh, it's not a big deal. We can get rid of it if we want to, like this. But uh, that's going to be glued on the inside, so it's not a huge deal. But sometimes you see them when they're, they're on like the outside of a leg or something like that, where if you prime it, it's going to be a very obvious line, and you want to get rid of it. So, uh, but this model so far so good. Not a lot of them to worry about. Um, oh. As an aside, I got some glow-in-the-dark paint, and I'm so excited to use it. We're going to have to check that out later at some point. Uh, anyway, going back to the instructions here. And again, this is all going to go much faster if you're doing it at home. Um, I'm just showing you this, doing it slow so everyone can kind of keep up. So you can see where the pieces go, 11, 9, and 20. So uh, 11, 9, and 20. So let's just go ahead and put 20 on it first, because I want to show you that you don't need to really go in any specific order. Again, I'm fitting it to make sure it fits and just kind of get a feel for how it's going to be because once you get the glue on there, you kind of want to know what you're where you're going to go. You get these big bubbles sometimes on the end of the uh, on the end of the thing. Sometimes the, the glue kind of comes out itself as you can see. Just uh, dab that on some paper towel and get back down. That's fine. So I'm just going to put some glue on the inside here. Don't have to be like super neat and tidy with that. Set that down, and then, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and put this in here. Now, if you notice, a little bit of glue pushed out here. That's going to happen sometimes, and all you have to do is take a little piece of paper towel and just dab it out of there, and that's it. You don't need to rub or anything like that. You just need to touch it to the area, and it's going to suck that uh, glue up into the paper towel. Um, so there you go. So that piece Get in there, the as you can see, pretty solid. It's not going to come out. Um, but again, it's going to be about a day until it's it's bonded, really, and it feels like one solid piece of plastic, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is a C9 mug, yep. Yeah. They gave that to me a, a while ago. So, now this piece appears to go right here. Yeah, that's right. And you can kind of see, because there's little divots here in the plastic, and there's little bumps here. So you can tell those sort of go together. And a lot of times when you've got a piece like that, there will be little indicators that, that kind of tell you, you know, this is where to glue it. I kind of, the glue is coming out kind of fast because this is a newer bottle. So I've got a little bit extra here, so I'll just dab that up again. Not the hugest deal. And, uh, yeah, I'll just stick that on there. And there you go. Don't need to press very hard. I'm not, like, torquing it like crazy. I'm just firmly, you know, making sure everything is in there, making sure there's no, no gaps or anything like that. And that's it. That piece is on, you know? Now, for this piece, it goes kind of in the middle somewhere. So I want to make sure that I'm testing to find out where it is. Okay, it goes first. So it goes here. So that means we have to glue from here and here. So I'm going to put some glue on there. And do that. It's kind of funny. Like, uh, I never really thought of building models on stream much before. I've, I've done it before, but... Uh, I've had so many people talk to me during my streams to be like, 
you know, and say things like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of intimidated to get into the hobby because I'm worried that building the models is going to be the hard part. And for some reason, my brain kind of always thought, oh, the painting the model seems like the intimidating thing. But then I kind of remembered when I got started, building the models was a little bit intimidating, you know? You paid all this money for this, this plastic, and you want to make sure it ends up in the right shape at the end, right? So anyway, that's on there. Again, sticks very quickly. So we're on to the next piece we need to cut out. So let's cap the glue again for the second. There you go. And page two. So next step is going to be, looks like a couple legs. So 13, just like that goes on there. So the tongue sticking out awkwardly, which is hilarious and disturbing. And uh, then this foot. So sometimes what you're going to see is you're going to see little like breakout boxes. So it says this piece goes here. But in order to make this piece, you have to do these, these two steps first. So when you see a little sort of word balloon sort of thing, that means do this stuff first and then use that completed piece in this area. So we're going to do this first, 18 and 19. And then I need 13 too, so I'll cut that out if I see it. So let me see. Looks like a lot of that is here. Here's 13, so I'll just cut that out right now. Again, cutting away from the piece initially. So that's one leg, and then we need 18 and 19. Here is 18, which again has the line underneath it, so you don't uh, think it's 81 or something. So 18, and where is 19? Is 19 on this? Looks like it's not. Go back to the other one. 19, let's see. Yeah, here we go, here we go. 19. All right. We've got sort of a, a neat foot detail, and then there's also like little like vines and snakes and stuff like that. That's neat. I, I love the aesthetic for uh, Seraphon, for the, the lizard men as they used to be called. Um, it, it's so neat because it's you've got these like lizard men that ride on dinosaurs, which is awesome to begin with. But then they've got this neat sort of like Mayan, Aztec sort of-ish uh, uh, aesthetic to it which I just think is, is really, really cool. Because I've, I've always loved that aesthetic um, historically, and so to see it attached with like dinosaur riding dinosaurs kind of is, is really, really neat. Yeah, a tiny, tiny little skull here too. A couple little skulls, yeah. Thanks for the follows, guys. Um, so that's one piece. Oh, look at this, I forgot another piece. Oh no, all right, there we go. Yeah, I'll just sand that, as you can see, I'm not super obsessive about it. Sometimes you need to be a little bit more obsessive than others. Uh, you'll you'll know. Like you'll be able to see if like there's a piece where you really need to spend some extra time kind of sanding it down. But for the most part, this is pretty much how fast it goes. So I made two little cuts there um, because the piece was kind of at a little bit of an angle. And there. Give yourself to the rhythm. So blowing out some of the areas between the scales. Yeah, thanks for all the follows, guys. Hope you uh, hope you enjoy and uh, hope you stick around for uh, for future ones. I want to do a minimum of uh, we're we're gonna do I would say at least two of these per week. Um, this week is gonna be a little bit challenging, so I've got Hearthstone Masters tour um, uh, from the last uh, few days of the week. But, and I'm also doing that League of Legends charity stream tournament, which uh, also at 6 p.m. tonight, guys, Pacific time. Definitely tune in for LCS teams. Duking it out for charity. It's great. Um, it's a wash your hands cup. Uh, anyway, enough advertising. Here's the uh, other leg. Whoa, done. So let's go put, and put this leg on first because it's finished. So this one, I'm kind of just feeling it out, making sure I can have a good sense of where it's going to go. And that's about where it's going to be. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely busy. I feel like, you know, where everyone's kind of self-isolating and everything right now, it's kind of on esports to sort of pick up the slack entertainment-wise. So we're trying. Thanks for watching. It's also a great time to start a new hobby like uh, like miniatures. You know, it can be Warhammer, it can be D and D miniatures, it can be really anything. But uh, I I love Warhammer because again, I I think the models are the best looking uh, of anything out there in my opinion, um, and the game is is the best. The game is super fun. The models are super awesome. The leg is on there. 
and uh, you can see not really any big gaps or anything like that. Sometimes you'll see a model where there is a big gap here and there's other little um, substances uh, like stuff called liquid green stuff you can buy to sort of fill some of those gaps. You can find ways to fill it with like different types of glue and stuff, but for the most part you're not really going to have many big gaps on your models unless you mess something up, you know. Um, and so we assemble this leg piece, which looks like it goes like this. So I'll put some glue on here. All right. And then, yeah, just making sure. This is one of those pieces where it, it, it notches into place, but you do need to make sure it's kind of even. So I'm kind of, you know, like I said, pressing firmly, but not torquing it like crazy, right? So there you go. And, and you'll be surprised how fast it holds on bigger pieces like that. I need to attach it to the body. And again, I'm not covering the surface with glue. As you can see, I'm just putting like a little ribbon there because that's going to expand and uh, cover over a lot of that area. So it's fine. Whoops. And uh, yeah, so just put it in place and then just hold it for a second or two. And uh, that does it. That's really all you need to do. And then just, you don't want to set it like I wouldn't want to set it like this where it might, you know, push up and uh, push the legs out of place. You want to kind of set it in a way where it's it's going to favor the glue uh, drying a little bit easier. So keep that in mind when you do that as well. Thank you, Bill Skunk. Appreciate it, man. Uh, anyway, so more clipping. Cat back on the glue. And what's next? We've got this piece. So now we need uh, 22... 12 and then this leg piece is three pieces actually 16 83 and 17 so let's look for this leg piece first 16 83 and 17 so are there any pieces on here yep here's 16 let's see 16 all right and then any of the other ones on here nope so 16 83 and 17 all right well here's 17 I'm getting very good at, at spotting these because a lot of times I'll, I'll spot it by like the shape of the piece rather than finding the number. Sometimes you have to hunt down the number, but a lot of times you can just find the piece straight up. Generally, the numbers are, are in similar places like 70s, 60s. So if you see like higher numbers, you know, it's probably going to be around there. Right now I am looking for 83, right? Which is a foot. Uh, here it is. 83 right there. All right. I know some people that just love building models. They don't even like painting them. They ju they just like putting them together, you know. Which is fun if you if you come from sort of a Gundam model background like I do. I like this part of the process uh, quite a bit as well. So I don't know. It's just it's just fun, you know. If you ever played with like Legos as a kid or something like that, or you you know built tree forts or you put anything together really, it's just fun to take like little pieces of something and then have a finished product like create something right it's neat it's fun to be creative and uh, what you can do is is over time you can start like taking different pieces from different kits and putting them together and, and doing what they call kit bashing which is where you um, you know like I said kind of make your own models out of bits and pieces of, of other ones that you uh, you have right so that's something to kind of get into over time you know, if you want one of your guys to have a cloak and maybe he doesn't come with a cloak, um, you can always make one yourself out of another piece or out of, there's different substances like I talked about that you can form it and mold it and it dries hard like plastic and you can incorporate that into your model. So you're really not very limited at all with what you can do with any of this stuff. So right now, yeah, I'm just kind of like cleaning off some of these pieces and then I'll be able to put it together. All right, and like I said, when I cut, I kind of do a little bit of a twist. Um, not twisting uh, as I'm cutting it, you don't want to twist the piece off, but when it gets near the bottom, I kind of do a twist to kind of make a cleaner cut. It's hard to describe. It's kind of one of those things you need to like feel out after you do it for a while. Nobody taught me how to, nobody told me to like do that. It's just something that I kind of discovered, you know? And, and I should state, too, that, like, this isn't the way 
to put together plastic miniatures. This is just a way. Um, this is a way that works, but uh, it may not be the best for you. So if you find a way that you like better, then definitely do it that way. This is just a way, not the way, which is important to think about when you're doing any sort of hobby is that um, with a lot of things, you uh, you find a lot of methods that pe that works for you know whoever is showing it, but it may not be the method that works for you. So try a method that you know works, and then if you like it, keep doing it. If you don't, then uh, modify it to fit your needs. You know. So anyway, putting this foot piece together is that right? Is it like this? No. See, I did I did fit it, but then I then I moved it away again. What am I doing? All right, where does this go? Hold on, I'll figure this out. I had it like a second ago, remember that? There we go, okay, yeah. Sometimes they are a little bit tricky. Um, and here's something to kind of think about right now is that if it feels not right, it's probably not right. Like if it feels harder to put together a piece than you think it should feel, it's probably, you're probably not doing it in the right way. Uh, so either go back to the instructions and, and look at that and make sure, or just take a moment and judge the piece and, and figure it out. That's an important thing I, I think to remember is that if it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right when it comes to putting together models. Maybe in life too, but uh, at least for putting together models, that's for sure. So this area, um, I've actually built one of these before. So, whoops, so I'm a little bit familiar with it. Uh, there we go. Yeah. But that was years ago, actually. So there we go. There's our other leg. What am I building right now? Um, I'm, I'll show you. I'm building uh, this guy right here, the Bastelodon. With, um, what's it called on top? With the, I forget what it's called. It's called the, some some sort of crystal ray beam. It's essentially like, it's essentially a dinosaur with a big laser on its back is is what it is. But that's what I'm building. So anyway, this is that one leg. Uh, the other things we were looking for for this particular piece was 12 and 22. Let's find that. Let's see, use 22, one of the tail pieces. And then I need to find 12, which I believe is another leg. Yeah, here we are. It's right here. 12 is another leg. There. All right. So let's go ahead and put the tailpiece on first. I'm going to wait with the, the leg that we just built. I'm going to give it a little bit of time to set. Um, I don't really need to, but it just it doesn't hurt, you know? So let's do the other pieces here first. I know I didn't cap the glue. I forgot to. What can I say? Over time, you're going to get like tons of these little pieces of plastic. You want to make sure that uh, you've got this piece or something like that underneath it to catch most of those. So you can throw them all away at once and uh, avoid having your wife step on them and then get really angry at you. Uh, that's I would recommend. I would recommend trying to avoid that. Just uh, you know, just as a as an aside, you know. Yeah, solar engine. Thanks, Nicole. Yeah, that's right. Solar engine is correct. That is the, the device on the back of the Basilodon that we're building. Yeah. Or if you've got like, I suppose if you've got like a pet or something like that, you don't want, him, you don't want the pet eating little bits of plastic. So you want to try to be careful to not have those fly everywhere. Sometimes they will anyway. Sometimes you'll be cutting a piece off and it'll just fly through the air. And you're like, well, I'll find that again when I'm walking through the room at night. Uh, all right, so there we go. Seems good. Cool. All right, so I'm going to add the tail piece on first. It looks like it goes like this. Kind of a big piece of pointy tail. And so this is kind of this piece is kind of designed a little bit to have gaps in the areas, but uh, where the glue goes, but that's because for this particular model, that's kind of glued along the uh, armor plate lines, you know? So yeah, we see these big lines here, but 
it, that's intentional with this model, so don't worry about that. There's supposed to be kind of like big armor plate things because it's a big armored dinosaur, you know? Yeah, like a little raised tea tray. That's a good idea. That works too. My answer is just build a lot of it in my office so then they aren't in the rest of the house where someone can step on them. And uh, other legs. So the front leg is going to go right here. So glue that on. A little bit of glue inside here. And over time when you're doing this, you'll you'll figure out like how much glue to use, you know. Just kind of takes a little bit of time and practice. But you can see uh, I'm able to press this pretty firmly and these other pieces that we glued not too long ago are holding. So it really does glue quickly. Now it looks extra freaky with the arms and the, the tongue sticking out. <laughs> just, just a tongue, you know, as you do. So another little bit of glue. And I, I'm really barely squeezing this at all. Um, once it kind of gets started, it sort of flows out itself. Now I didn't check the fitting of that before I glued it, but um, I was pretty pretty reasonably sure I knew where it was going to go. So anyway, there's uh, the legs on there and part of the tail. So for now, I'm just going to brush some of this out of the way for the minute. Set that on the back. And uh, we've got one more piece to do, which is piece number three, this big uh, back armor piece. Which is right here. Three. There you go. Yep. And if you're quick enough, um, and again, like I, I recommended closing the glue cap between pieces, but uh, if you're quick enough, you don't need to worry about it drying out most of the time. But initially, when you're just getting started, I would I would really recommend, and this is what I did when I got it started, was uh, to put the cap on between everything. So again, just sanding down these areas. But the more you do this, the quicker you're going to get at it. All right, and then this, I believe, where does this go? This goes right like, aha, uh -huh, see? Two little divots here and two little bumps here. This goes somewhere, something like this. Yeah, see? All right, cool. So for that, um, you can kind of focus the glue on the areas you know are going to kind of connect here. So here, here, and if you really want to, you can put the glue on on uh, both pieces as well, just so you make absolutely sure. There. All right, so I'm gonna put that on. And I didn't quite get the glue in the right place a little bit here, but I'm just gonna leave it. It doesn't matter. There's gonna be other stuff glued to it anyway there. <clears throat> All right, so there we go. There's another piece of the armor on. It's weird because you've got these little gaps, but that's there's gonna be more stuff on there, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I have the uptime thing and everything set up I have to, I'm, I'm pretty bad at getting everything streamwise set up, so it's, it's all very bare bones. It's all very basic right now. You'll have to bear with me. So anyway, next part is going to be, as you can see, 4, 10, and 23. Just going to find those. Easy to find number 10. It's huge. So we'll grab that. And then number 4 is right here. All right. So there's multiple ways to build this model. Um, I'm gonna and I'm gonna build the it the way uh, that has the big solar engine on the back. But there's also another thing with snakes spilling out and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. And so I think that's all you need. Oh yeah, 23. Right. Right. Hmm. Utilize the surface area when gluing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, they, there usually are areas where uh, the glue can go without any trouble. So let's see, 23, where is that? But yeah, but I wouldn't put glue over the entire area because then you're going to have it squeezing out the sides and then you're going to have a big mess. And 
uh, it's going to mess up the surfaces a little bit of the plastic. So you'll kind of get a sense as you do it, as far as what the what enough glue is. You know, what constitutes enough glue. A lot of it comes from uh, experience. And like I said too, I'm just showing you a way, not the way. All right, so there's one piece. I'm just gonna glue this on right now because it's the only piece for the tail. Putting a little bit of dotted glue there, not a ton. And you kind of know already how it's gonna fit. So do that, go ahead and press it a little bit firmly again. No glue seeping out the sides, which is nice. And that's a big, meaty, scary tail to worry about now on that guy. There we go. All right, let's see. So now the other pieces. I cut that part off. And uh, yeah, I would say you can uh, you can probably build a, a start collecting in an afternoon or in an evening. Um, once you kind of get the hang of it. I'm not going to build the whole thing right now just because this stream is more about like kind of the basics of gluing and building. And like I mentioned, I've got some other shows for tonight I kind of have to get ready for, but we're at least going to get this guy done. So I love, and I got to say, there's not much that feels more satisfying than having a piece like that just fit perfectly into place. It was like that subreddit that's like perfect fit. That's what that piece felt like right there felt amazing. It was great. So there's that. And I'm just going to do this other piece really quick here. Do be careful that you don't snip your fingers. I haven't done that myself, but I know there's other people that have, so be a little bit cautious. Is this like ASMR now? the sanding noises I don't know maybe I'm in the wrong streaming category on Twitch and this piece goes uh, it looks like right here right yeah that's right okay it goes like that yep. so again you can kind of match the divots with the ones on the underside and there's this flat area that fits right in here so now we kind of know where to where to paint so I'm going to put a little bit on all the surfaces there. And whoa, and then, then I threw it on the ground. Um, yeah, there we go. All right. And this is uh, pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Looks sick. I love this model. It's such a cool, like, little sort of, uh, um, like, armored dinosaur kind of thing. It's awesome. I'm going to get myself a bit more comfortable in my chair here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right, so what is next? Next is going to be some of the skinks. So we actually have little skinks on the back and on the back of this guy. And uh, this is where we can kind of discuss another part of uh, model building, which is sub-assemblies. So if you look at this model you can see there's a dinosaur and then you can see there's a solar engine on top with the skinks holding it on there's one guy in the back like controlling it you know um, what some people like to do is they like to build the different pieces separately uh, paint them separately and then glue them together at the end um, which you can absolutely do um, I generally just like to build it all at once even though sometimes that can make it a little bit tricky to get your paintbrush in there you know around different things um, but I look at this model, and I don't really see it as being too tough to paint around. Everything is pretty in the open here, so I think I'm just going to build it all at once. But it's really up to you. It's up to what you feel comfortable with. Another advantage of building it all at once is that then you can just play with it right away, even if it's not painted. I, I do like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a good point, uh, Joffle8, that they, they do make easy build kits as, all, uh, as well that don't require any glue. Uh, they just require push fit. Uh, the thing I don't like as much about those is that the push fit kits do tend to have gaps in the armor and things like that because uh, they don't fit together quite as snugly as if you would have glued them. But if you're just getting started and you absolutely don't want to glue, um, you could do that. But if you really want to get into the hobby 
and uh, you're going to build a whole army, you're going to have to glue something at some point, so why not just dive in? That's just my philosophy on it, though. But yeah, you can definitely do the push fit kits as well. Uh, there's other games like Warhammer Underworlds, where you have models like this that are super cool, and this guy's push fit. He, uh, you don't need any glue to build this guy. Um, I cut the little uh, pegs off and glued him anyway, because I like all the pieces to fit very flushly, but uh, you, you can do that too. It is definitely an option. So anyway, next part. Looks like it's going to be, like I said, the head, and then uh, starting to build some of the little rails that the skinks hold on to. That kind of stuff. So let's do that. So I need 24 and 25 for the head. Let's do that first. I'm so excited about painting this model, actually. It's been really one I've been looking forward to for a long time. Um, I had a Seraphon army uh, a year or two ago, but uh, I didn't really, I didn't enjoy playing it that much. They were kind of a, a weak army at the time. They're definitely not anymore. Uh, there was a new book with rules for them that just came out. Um, so I liked painting them, but they just weren't great on the battlefield. So uh, there was a charity for victims of some of the Northern California wildfires last year. And uh, it was a charity specifically for Warhammer players that had lost their armies uh, in the fires. You know, they'd lost everything, of course, but you know, you spend a lot of time building up your Warhammer army. And, and even though obviously you don't need Warhammer to survive, it, it hurts, you know, it hurts to lose something that you spent so much time and put so much love into. Um, so I ended up donating my Seraphon army to that charity to uh, hopefully give uh, some of those players something to put on the table and have a good time with in a, in a difficult time. So now I'm uh, restarting a new Seraphon army, building it a little bit differently and uh, can have a good time with it. So there you go. That's where my old Seraphon army went anyway. Yeah, he finally gets ahead. No more, no more random tongue. Although, you know, I could just like put two googly eyes here and then just, uh, you know, and then just like build him like that. How about that? I probably, nah, I probably shouldn't do that. Uh, all right, so gluing. I think uh, you could glue, I don't know if you can glue the head together and then put it on. I think you probably have to put it on in pieces, but I'm going to just put glue around the outside here. And then I'm going to take one of these pieces, one of the two, and I'm going to glue these little areas that uh, connect it here. Not a ton, because again, you don't want a ton of the glue seeping out. But uh, yeah. So you only need to glue one side because you're going to have the other side touching it anyway, so it's not a, not a huge deal. So one part on there, and then I'll just uh, stick the other part on. There we go. And boom. He's got a head. There you go. He's going to have another little piece on top here. <laughs> which is why I'm not super concerned about like this area right here because it's gonna have something on top of it. But right now I'm just kind of moving it around making sure there's no big gaps in the front or anything like that. But it fit together pretty nicely actually. Yeah, no more random tongue, yay. Congratulations, little Basilodon. Uh, all right, so now what do I need? I need 21, another armor piece. And then I need uh, some of the actual stuff that goes on his back, which is interesting. And sometimes you might go, you might be building something and you realize, oops, I missed a part, um, which generally isn't a problem. Uh, you can usually go back and just stick on the part that you missed in the instructions or whatever. Um, but if you do run into a situation where you just can't put the piece on that you forgot, then, uh, you know, use a tool, use your hands, uh, gently pull apart the pieces that you already glued on there. And uh, if it's been, like I said, less than a day, it should come apart. And then you can kind of finagle it into working again. It's it's not ideal, but it is it is something anyway. Uh, let's see. So this goes um, right here. Is that right? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So you see the divot there, and you see this one here, and it looks like. Yep, you can also see where the scales, see little notches there, where the uh, scales correspond with these right here. 
So the, and if you feel it, it fits it fits really perfectly here. It feels like a really good fit. I do need to sand this down a little bit more. All right. And for this one, it's at kind of a weird angle, so I use the flat tool. There you go. Perfect. All right. And then, yeah, just a little bit on top there, a little dot here and there. And, yeah, just took a quick glance at the uh, instructions again to make sure. Yep, now he's got that nice little tail armor piece there. Okay, no googly eyes, so I think we'll, we'll skip the googly eyes this time. So let's see, now I need to put the rail on the left side. So it's 31, 32, and 29. So these are going to get to be a little bit smaller pieces here. So 29 is this piece right here. And you can see there's a little skin hand attached to this. That's interesting. Again, you don't want to get anywhere near these little pieces. So I'm cutting well away from the actual piece itself because I want to make sure I can get really accurate cuts um, next to the piece that's going to be part of the model. And then what are the other pieces? 31 and 32. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So here's 31, a little bit small. And you kind of want to hold it sometimes. So it doesn't, sometimes if you cut it, the tension will make it fly off, you know, into who knows where, right? Uh, so 31. And so there's two pieces. I'll show you this. There's two pieces here that are looking pretty identical, 31 and 32 but the way they fit into the models a lot of times are, are one way. So if you get these two switched, it's gonna fit a little bit awkwardly. So what I'm gonna do is, cause I know 31 goes here and 32 goes here. I'm gonna actually set 31 down on this side. And I'm gonna set 32 down this side so that I don't get it messed up, you know? So where's 32 and here it is. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. Do you see that fly off there? That was not intentional. That was not for demonstration purposes. But very luckily, it just landed on the uh, instructions right next to me. So <laughs> we lucked out there. But that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that was almost, we almost lost a tiny piece. Which does not happen very often, but it, every once in a while. The, uh, the forces of order, Sigmar was with us there. So anyway, I'm cutting little extra pieces off of these. There you go. And these are so small. A lot of times you don't even need to shade it if you get a nice clean cut. Not shade it, uh, sand it down, shave it rather. Shave it, sand it, whatever you want to say. And again, I'm setting them in the, in the arrangement that I know they're going to go with on this uh, piece here. Yeah. Oh man, gray carpet would be the worst. I've got kind of like a beige carpet, so I can find it pretty easily. But I've had like, I've, I've been like on the floor at the local Games Workshop store helping somebody find like a tiny little claw or something that flew off of a model that they lost. It definitely happens. All right, so on rounded things like this, I like to use the flat sanding tool and just slowly rotate the piece that works pretty well um, just to make sure that the uh, result is flush with the little um, bar here pole I don't know whatever you want to call it there's that and then there we go these sometimes it's it's a little bit tricky to cut in these little areas and that's why you really want a uh, clippers that has a very sharp point um, just in case you're curious here are the Citadel clippers they do have a very sharp point um, I just I just prefer these a little bit more I've been using them for years so that's that's kind of why but whatever your clippers are you want them to make sure that they have a, a very sharp point so you can get in there and make those really little fine cuts you know so yeah yeah, a dark gray uh, floor is, is definitely a, a trial for sure. So this piece goes um, on this side, and it kind of goes like this. 
you want to make sure the arm is sticking out, right? It looks like, so it kind of goes like that. And then uh, it's attached to two little things that, that pop in here. So uh, I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put these in first. So here's where fitting things early makes a lot of sense. So I'm kind of looking at the pegs and how they line up. And so it should be like that. And I'm just going to glue these one at a time here. So again, like a little dot of glue there. You definitely don't need a lot of glue for these. So there's that. All right. That piece is in there. And then, and again, like as we, as I was talking about earlier, if you're going to do that sub assembly thing I was talking about, this is when you would start to assemble the stuff without putting it on the, uh, the miniature. Um, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Okay. There's that. And then this piece should just slot nicely into here, which it does. So yeah, that's how that'll go. So then uh, in order to make this work, I'm just going to put a little bit, little dot of glue here and a little dot of glue here. And then I am going to slot this into the area. It's kind of bending a little bit. Um, and some of these little plastic pieces can kind of warp and bend sometimes. Not enough to really cause much of a problem. Uh, like it should be okay. And this may even be designed to have a little bit of, of a bend to it as well to show sort of the weight of the device on top. But yeah, that, that should be okay. The tricky part is making the skink arm line up with the hand sometimes on some of these things, but I think this will, this looks like it'll turn out fine. So anyway, there's, uh, there's one on there. And then it is 34, 33, and 30. And a lot of times I like to just turn the model on my table the way that it shows in the instructions. So there's that. And so I'm actually going to turn the model to face that way. So when I arrange the pieces, because they're tiny pieces that look very similar, that way I don't get mixed up, right? Uh, all right, so let's see. So it's going to involve 30. This time we're going to really try not to have one of the pieces fly off into potentially oblivion. That's the goal. All right, there's that. And then 33, 34. So 33 is here, 34 is here. So I'm going to do it like that. Wait a second. Did I glue it on wrong? I think I glued it on the wrong side, guys. That's what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's hard to see, even if you've been doing this for years. Because to me, if you look at this illustration, it looks like you're gluing it onto this side of the model, right? But in fact, you're gluing it onto this side of the model. Because now I look at this side, and this definitely goes on to the right side of it. It is wrong. So this is perfect, actually, because this is an opportunity for me to show you that if it's not set, you can just pull it out see be very gentle but you can just do that and so when you detach plastic glue like that you can see it's a little bit gooey you know but the actual spaces aren't really going to be damaged so it's okay if this happens there you go see it's a little bit gooey but it's really not that bad and so all i need to do is just put the glue in the things on the other side and literally just stick it back in it doesn't really matter and see, that's, uh, that was not intentional, but even, uh, even when you are, you know, like in my position, you, and you've done this a million times, it's still uh, a situation where you're going to screw up sometimes, you know? So now the bar is actually wrong as well. So I need to switch these around too. But again, not a problem. I can just do this and then... Um, I can swap it like that, I think. Is the bar wrong? Oh no, you know what? The funny thing is that uh, the numbers may have been wrong, which unfortunately does happen sometimes on some of these instructions. The numbers are actually wrong. I might have just screwed it up, but I've definitely seen ones where it's just straight up got the wrong number. Because, yeah, if you look at this, this doesn't line up anymore. Yeah, it looks like uh, this one is the one to go for this, even though this one was 30 and that one was 29. So it kind of, you know, I hate to throw anyone under the bus, but it kind of looks like the numbers may have been wrong in that guide. 
which honestly uh, it's 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 something that happens uh on a fairly regular basis unfortunately but that's okay again like i said there is absolutely nothing that is screwed up in this that you cannot fix yourself so we'll just do that now i can just use this whereas on uh, this thing yeah see now this looks a lot more this looks a lot more normal right there we go yeah that looks a lot more like what the illustration is supposed to look like if we put it there yeah but that's the, the important lesson to learn from here is that you're gonna run into things where it's gonna be a little bit confusing and no matter who you are even if you're you're me you're gonna mess it up from time to time but it is very easily fixable so let's see I'm just gonna put this in here and there we go so there you go that's how it should be I believe and then on this side it's gonna be like this eventually but I need to cut the other pieces out real quick first so let's see and uh, with the Seraphon stuff too these are kits that are a little bit on the older side as well and when I say old I mean like maybe four or five years or something like that um, and those are a little bit more prone to having to sort of maneuver things a little bit to get it to connect right but again no big deal so if uh, we have the numbers correct here 34 should be this way and 33 should be the other way and I'm holding this this time so it doesn't fly off there we go all right Maybe my tea that's hilarious actually that's uh, I I'm kind of I'm kind of glad that happened because uh, it's good to it's good to be able to show that you can just fix things really easily like that. But man, when you when you do it, you're like, "What? Did I really mess that up?" And sometimes you did and sometimes sometimes the the, the book did, but it's usually you. AKA me, perhaps. So anyway, these areas again that had the glue in them before, put a little bit more glue in there cuz remember what this plastic glue does is it um it bonds uh, the plastic together, so it essentially kind of melts it a little bit. So it's perfectly fine if you need to put a little bit more in there. There's that. And then I'll put a little bit of glue on the tops again with this, because the other part is already uh, cut out from before. And then this will just go right here. There we go. And so there you have it. The two bars are on there. Uh, despite the uh, the trials and tribulations, uh, it ended up working out okay. Everything's on. Everything's fine. <laughs> so, yep, no problem. Yeah, a 3D guide would be nice. Make like a cell phone app out of that or something like that. That would be cool. Anyway, so next part. More armor plating. Looks like uh, 26, 5, and 14. Uh, let's see, and I think we're pretty much done with this sprue at this point. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything really... There's a couple snakes, but I know those are part of the Arc of Sotek, which is the alternative way you can build this. A lot of models you can build in different ways to equip them with different weapons. Um, and there's a lot of people that actually build both and then just magnetize the different parts that are different and then put them on there. Like, these, are, these magnets are a little bit too big to do that, but these are magnets I use on the bottom of bases to magnetize them to a tray I carry things around on. You can get smaller versions of these magnets and actually magnetize the different building options and put them together like that. It's a little bit more complex than what we're going into today, but um, it's something I've done once in a while. Just to make things easier for, uh, for transporting. Um, for instance, here's, a, uh, here's one of my Caradon Overlords again on his flyer base. And uh, what I did is I just magnetized the uh, bottom of it, the flyer base. So you can just be on the table like that and if you bump him he's not going to fall over as easily and then for transport he's a lot easier to transport where you can take these pieces apart there you go so yeah just a little simple example of uh, magnetizing pieces and then when he's on the battlefield you can just turn him at uh, whoever he's facing at so that's handy there you go all right so what was that 26 i need 14 and 5. 
Yeah, the other army I'm kind of working on right now is uh, the Caradron Overlords, but I haven't had much time to work on anything, honestly, lately. Maybe the show is just an excuse for me to actually do Warhammer stuff. All right, where are the pieces that I'm looking for? There they are. Five. And where is 14? 14 is right here. So we're doing the right side armor right now. So we'll start with, start with this. This is the leg armor on the right side, it looks like. Yeah, it's like everybody everybody has like their stories of the models they've messed up the most by uh, by gluing the wrong things to the wrong pieces. It's always funny. It always turns out, but you know, it's like man, I totally thought this thing was part of another thing. But, so this goes here. A little bit of armor on the leg. That's kind of cool. Neat. That's cool. I don't remember that armor being on there the last time I built it. But like I said, I built the other, uh, the alternative way of, of building this guy last time, so. Some glue on the inside of here. And then you can kind of, rather than seeing it, you can sort of feel it. When you slide a piece around and it stops moving, and it feels like it fits really snugly, that's generally where it is. So this is a very snug fitting piece here. All right. And again, just more sanding. And of course, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'm betting pretty much all of you know exactly how to do all of this, but I just thought, you know, because I had gotten the questions, it'd be a good idea to do a stream where we really do go from, you know, the very beginning and, and uh, show what it takes to really just get into the hobby, you know, from the, the very start. And it'll be fun to do the progress of the uh, start collecting kit over time. Stick this piece on there. You can see it just, it, as long as it fits snugly, it just bonds immediately. And it looks like it was always there, which is really cool. And then another piece here. But it'll be fun when we start uh, painting it because I'm gonna do different painting methods. Um, with the skinks, when I get to the skinks, uh, it's going to be a lot of using contrast paint to try to get the skinks done quickly, right? Because when you've got a unit like skinks and you've got a lot of them in your army, um, it's great to have a method like contrast paint to just get them all done very quickly and, and looking battle ready. This is some head armor we're putting on here too. Again, you know, you notch the, you find the notches and you match it to the stuff on top of the head. There you go. And now he's got his little hat. He's gone from just a weird tongue to a, a, a beautiful lizardy face. It's nice. All right. So there's that. He he is adorable, isn't he? Totes adorbs. Uh, all right. And I I did just say totes adorbs. I I realized that. Uh, so the skinks are going to go on the back. Um, and it shows you sort of the build for the skinks right here, uh, but it also shows you the last two armor pieces. So I'm gonna put on those armor pieces first, six and 15, and then we'll go from there. You know, I actually moved my camera setup, so as you can see, it's not in front of me anymore, and I like this a lot better, but it's still uh, tough to not hit it once in a while, you know? Uh, where is six? There we go. Yeah. All right. Cool. So this guy has two configurations. One is called the solar engine. Um, 
which is essentially just a huge laser beam on its back, which is awesome. That's what we're building. And the other option is called the Ark of Sotek, which is sort of this box of venomous snakes, pretty much, that is also on its back and just magically spews out tons and tons of snakes. And so they both do different things in the game, and it kind of depends on, like, what do you want for your army? Uh, the army I'm building, and we'll do another one where we talk about that, um, where we talk about, like, how to decide how to build your first Warhammer army, like what units to put in there. I'll do another video on that um, because you do have to choose different weapon choices. So I'm choosing this because I want some long range uh, shooting in my army. My army is gonna be very, uh, the, the Seraphon army that I've got designed right now is very um, shooting and magic heavy. It's not gonna have a lot of upfront melee uh, sort of, uh, threats too much it's gonna have a little bit but it's mostly gonna be about being evasive getting lots of shooting done and uh, doing lots of spells because spells are just super cool that's why so this is the other leg armor piece all right and then this just fits uh, you can see that this is fully molded right here and we're gonna cover some of it that's because the alternative way of building this guy uh, doesn't include these leg armor pieces, I believe. So, but for this one, he gets like some extra front uh, arm armor because he's essentially a big like a turret. What's up, Jern? Things are good, man. All right, so there we go. All the armor's on. We've got the uh, little bars on the back to support the arc of Sotek. So now we can actually build uh, the little skink guys. So there's one for each side. So we need 67, 68, 70, and 69. So again, this is what I was talking about earlier, where you get sort of these pop-out bubble things, right? Where uh, you build this part first, then you can add the arm, then you can add the spear, and then you put it on, right? So you have to go through this process to get to here. So that's what we're going to do first. So 67, 68, 70, 69. Or you can just go 67, 68, 69, 70. I suppose that works too. Uh, all right, so where is it? Here is 68 and 70, so I'm gonna... 70 is a really tiny little arm piece, so I'm gonna put my thumb kind of over here so it doesn't fly off. And I'm gonna scoot some of these pieces over to the side and put the arm in the middle there so it doesn't get kind of like lost in the sauce. Um, so 70, that's the arm. Here's 68, it's one of the legs. And then 67 is the body of the skink, which is right here. All right. And sometimes you have to rotate the clippers around to get just the right angle on there. There's that. And then let's find the last piece, which is 69, which is the spear that he's holding. All right. So uh, now we'll just kind of clip off all the little pieces in the order in which we'll assemble it. So there's that. I'm trying to be careful not to cut anything extra off because now we're working with really tiny little pieces here. So you do have to be a little bit extra careful. Then again, it's nothing that's really too difficult if you've done it a few times. Just sanding. A lot of these little pieces don't need quite as much sanding. And what I would recommend is, uh, what I'll show you is um, when you've got these tiny little uh, multi-part guys to uh, glue it in like sections basically uh, and give it a little bit of time to dry, just a, a you know 30 seconds a minute to dry uh, so that these little areas which sometimes don't hold quite as well initially can get that little extra chance to set a little bit more so there's that and so the first piece is going to be putting this leg into here like that so again you really don't need much glue at all all right and there's that and then you can just leave it that's it and so here's what i was talking about where 
I'll say set this guy aside and then now we're gonna do the next part, right? Just give it a couple seconds to dry. So don't cut all of this off right away when you've got a little multi-part thing like that. Uh, just do one part, set it aside, do the next part, set it aside, and then that'll make sure your little model is just a little bit more set before you put it all together. So here's the arm. So again, not very much time, just maybe 30 seconds, but that's enough time to make this a little bit more solid. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Jern. Appreciate that. Thank you. That's awesome to hear that, yeah. Wow, that's great, man. Congratulations. That's uh, That means a lot to me. I appreciate that. I'm glad to, hopefully I can inspire you to uh, give Warhammer a try as well, because this is like, you know, it's a, it's a, we all love strategy games, right? You love uh, StarCraft II, you love, love League of Legends. I love uh, Warhammer as well. So there's that. And then one last piece, let this dry for a little bit. And then this is going to be the one that's going to be a little bit more tricky to get on there, because uh, whereas before there were like little slots to put the legs and the arms in the body, this one is just a flat surface to attach the uh, attach the arm to the body, and that can be a little bit intimidating sometimes. Again, it's a, a round surface on the model, so I'm using the flat surface to sand that. Yeah. All right. And I think what I'll do. Let's see. This guy is going to go on the left side. So he's going to be the arm's going to be like this. What's going to make it more stable, I think, is to actually put this part on first and then do the other part. So first we'll test fit it. As you can see, there's a little slot here for the foot, see? And then the wrist will touch the other wrist there. So see, that's how it's going to be like that. Yeah. And then it looks like the other foot is going to fit here. Right, so we're going to put a little bit of glue here, and a little bit of glue in the hole, and then a bit of glue on the arm, too. And then I'll put this in and just kind of hold it there for a second. I'm going to brace it a little bit on the bar itself, and give it maybe, you know, a few seconds. 10 seconds is usually all you need. And so this is on now. Um, but now we've got to attach the arm and so this is where it does get a little bit tricky sometimes Because there's no like you, you can see there's no slot or anything. It's just a flat surface against a flat surface so The first thing you need to do the nice thing with these is that you can kind of decide the arm position You can have the spear up you can have the spear down you can really decide how you want it, right? Um, I think I'm gonna have it kind of a neutral position So I'm gonna put the glue here and uh, you can see there's there's a dot of glue there. It's 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 a good amount, so I may actually dab a little bit off. Because you don't need a lot of glue for these little areas. And then uh, I'm going to take I'm gonna kind of brace it a little bit. I'm gonna just put that on and just hold it in position for a little while. Now the nice thing is that it's a lighter piece so that it will hold, it will bond very quickly. You just want to make extra sure it's in the right spot. So you just get your face right up into it. Look very carefully like that. And then, uh, yeah, you can let it go. And there's a little bit of a mold line on the back of that arm. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll go in and clean that later tomorrow or something after it's all dried. And uh, there's a little bit of a line around the shoulder too. But with some of these, you just kind of end up getting that. And if it's small enough when you prime it, that'll get covered over. But you can also, again, wait for it to dry and then uh, go in and, and uh, fix it. So anyway, this hand still looks good connected to that. Might turn the arm a little bit. When it's partially bonded, you can actually like turn it a little bit and readjust. There you go. Nice. So this is, it's on there, but it's very unstable. Like if I bumped it or dropped it, it would definitely break. But it's on there enough that it, it shouldn't move unless it gets disturbed by something. So that's the first one on there. All right. Well, thanks. At least enjoy the stream anyway. Let's see. 
And then we're looking for <clears throat> 71, 77, 72, and 73. So same thing, just other side, basically. So it's going to be, let's see, 71. Where is 71? Here it is. 71. And then the arm is going to be 73. Holding that so it doesn't pop off. And then leg is going to be 72. And then the arm with the spear is going to be 74. No, 77. Ah, okay. So it, before it was all over in this area, but this is actually the other spear arm. Aha. So you do really have to be careful sometimes about looking at the instructions because it's not always going to be right in the same area like you might think it'd be. You might think it'd be. I talked like a pirate for a second there, but you got the idea. All right. So now just cutting the little excess off again. Sanding it so it's nice and smooth. Because the smoother it is, the nicer it'll look when you put that contrast paint on in the future. And these are pretty fine grain sanding things, so you can be pretty firm with them and it's still not going to mess up any of the other uh, details, really. All right, so let's do the leg. Let's get the leg on there first. And again, it's like I was talking about, you know, do uh, one glued section at a time for this, just to give it a little bit of time to set. Okay. So what that means is a little bit of glue like that, and there's the leg. That slots nicely into position, so you don't really need to worry too much about that. Uh, a little bit of glue popping out there, so I'm going to just dab it a little bit with the paper towel. I'm going to raise my chair a little bit too. This is, my elbows keep hitting the table. Ugh. My chair is kind of busted, so I kind of have to pull it to raise it. It's kind of annoying. There we go. All right. And I'm going to attach the arm. The chair is also very dusty underneath, apparently. See, when this like coronavirus thing came along, I was already uh, in good shape as far as like washing hands and things goes, because when you build models and, and I have a pet reptile as well, like when you're cleaning the cage or like helping them out, like you need to be washing your hands pretty constantly. So I was already in a pretty regular hand washing uh, sort of habit since I was a kid. It's like shocking to me, like how people need to be told to wash their hands. I don't get it. Maybe I'm just obsessive about it. All right, let's see. So there's that. And then I'm going to do what I did before. Where I'm going to put this part on the model first and let that set a little bit, and then I can add the spear. So we know where it's going to go. So I can just add the paint here. And we'll hope it fits. All right. Not the tightest fit ever. But I can change a little bit. Oops. There we go. And sometimes if you want to like do what I want to do and like push the foot a little bit more into this tool, you can take one of your sanding tools and just use it to push that down. Just push things into position a little bit more. There we go. So as long as this isn't messed with too much, it's going to stay there, right? So there is that. Yeah. Uh, Boomers out there buying all the toilet paper, man. I don't know. Like, that's it's the most ridiculous thing. Like, why would you ever think that this would be like a reason toilet paper would run out? I don't I don't understand. You definitely don't need to stockpile that unless there's other uses for it then that I'm not aware of. And I mean 
unless your grocery store is packed like shoulder to shoulder with people, it's a pretty minimal risk thing going, you know, once every two weeks, right? Even during this thing, as long as you wash your hands and don't lick anybody, you know? So I'm kind of, the whole like runs on grocery stores thing kind of doesn't make a lot of sense to me. My local grocery store, like, yeah, everything was kind of pretty much like gone, but all the fresh food was there. And like they would buy all the bread, but they wouldn't buy the tortillas. So I'm like, all right, I like tacos. I can make myself like really delicious fresh tacos now with all this. Because it's not that there's a lack of food. It's just there's a lack of like all the like canned goods and all that. So I just, you know, it's not it's not hard to have enough food for two weeks. Like you don't need to stockpile to have food for two weeks, right? I mean, if you're going grocery shopping more than once every two weeks anyway, you're probably not buying things very efficiently, right? So I find the whole thing kind of silly. It's pretty easily it's pretty easy to socially isolate without having to make like a ton of grocery runs. All right, so this I'm gonna turn the arm a little bit. You see the glue keeps it locked in there. And then I'm just using the using the sanding tool to sort of push that into place. And there's little gaps here. But again, a lot of that's going to be filled with the primer because it's not that big of a gap. So it's okay. Yeah. All right. So there we go. Little skink guys are uh, on there. Nice. We're making progress. And again, uh, this would be something that would take me a lot less time to build normally, but uh, we're going through it step by step so you guys can build it. So it's fine. Yeah. So now it's time to put the actual um, solar engine on there. So as you can see, there's little bits and pieces. We have to assemble this whole 59 area first. So 59 is a base, but we're going to need 66, 65, and then 64. So let's build that. The designs in these are so cool. I love it. It's all very, all very neat. It's like this, basically there's like this big crystal laser thing, you know, which is so awesome. Give yourself to the rhythm. <clears throat> Thanks for the follow. All right. Arc, Arc 90, Archon kind of. All right. 66. And then what do I need? 65. Here we go. So the Seraphon are essentially these like reptilian dinosaur riding warriors. What I'm looking for, 64, right? Yeah, 64. That uh, are they kind of fly around in these spaceships with these things called slan, which are kind of big amphibians that ride on. Uh, they kind of ride on these like chairs, stone chairs, and they they hate chaos and they want to kill all the demons and they're they're essentially good guys, um, but. They're the best guys because they're lizards that ride on dinosaurs. So that's what we're building. <clears throat> yeah, the nine is a typo, and you can change it. Oh no! <laughs> well, it's you know it, it gives you a unique name. We'll we'll let you have it. That's fine. Archon, thanks for the follow. All right, so it looks like this piece gets built first. Does it go like, oh, I see. There's like a little notch here, see? Or it goes like that, right? I kind of feel like I'm building one of those old, like, G.I. Joe things, you know, where they shot out, like, the little stuff. They shot out, like, little misses, missiles. Not misses, missiles. But this one just sticks in there. It's like a little crystal inside this device. And then that goes in here, it looks like. Yep. Now this part I've never built before actually, so I should I should be a little bit more attentive. Yeah, let's see. So and then this goes kind of this like this, I guess. All right, like that. Interesting. Hmm. All right. Got it. Well, some of them fit so tightly, you can just almost leave it without any glue. 
Yeah, I might as well just put a little glue there too. Why not? All right. And there, that will go in there. And that's part one done. Oh. Yeah, I hope everybody is feeling uh, feeling good. I'm in uh, I'm in California. I'm in LA. Uh, I've got a, a sister that's in Minnesota who's unfortunately feeling under the weather right now. So they told her her fever wasn't high enough to be tested yet. So we'll see we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's just a regular flu. Meanwhile, you've got uh, Oh, never mind. I won't get political. <laughs> Either way, wow, did you see that piece fly out of there? Yeah. All right, and 63. All right, and then this will all go on 59, which is the platform that it goes on. Yeah. All right. So I'm just gonna get the uh, the base all sanded first. And this weapon looks like so cool too. Once it's on the back, once it's painted, it look really neat. The last one I had, uh, like a year or two ago, I built the other weapon option, um, and they changed the rules. So the other weapon option, it was like really crazy and a lot of fun, but now this one's just like clearly superior. So I'm gonna use this for my army. All right, and piece number two goes like this, looks like. You've actually got a skink hand on the back. This is gonna be attached to another skink, and he's putting his palm in here to like make the weapon go apparently, which is neat. So a little bit of paint in here. There we go, it's probably a little bit too much, so I'll put that over here. I just dabbed that piece on a paper towel. And so now these pieces go in here. This is cool, so these are all gonna be like little glowing gem things, which is neat. So the idea with the Seraphon is that they're all very like high technology. I'm just making sure that it's the right orientation here. All right, they're all like very high technology, but they're also sort of, they're high technology in sort of a primal sort of way, which is really neat. But it's sort of like, you know, you ever see like ancient aliens on the History Channel? I'm sorry if you do, but, but, uh, also, you know, they kind of the whole like, oh, you know, the Aztecs had contact with aliens and all that. So it's kind of like taking that sort of idea and saying, uh, sure, but what if they were like dinosaur riding aliens, you know, and taking it that step farther, right? So uh, anyway, so that's where this piece goes. It looks pretty neat. And this piece looks like it fits right on top of here. Does it? Where does that fit? Oh, right there. Okay, so it fits on the on the spears. I see. Okay, got it. So it's gonna fit like that. So let's go ahead and do that part. So I'm just gonna put paint on these areas. One more over here, and then it can fit pretty much anywhere on the spears. It looks like. There we go. And I'll press this down again, not firmly, because I don't want to detach the arms of the skinks that are holding it. But that's the, uh, the start of it right there. And then he needs a little sort of crown thing too, which is, uh, oh, it doesn't have a name for the piece, but I should be able to find it. It doesn't have a number for the piece. But it's uh, right here, it's 27, yeah. But they don't have the a demonstration of superior bit, huh? judgment. Tormented by gnomes. Hey, thanks for the sub, man. I really appreciate it. You're an amazing DM as well. Tormented by gnomes, the uh, the DM for casters and castles. Thanks for the sub, man. Uh, anyway, so you can see this little crown thing. But look, no number. 
no number associated with it. That happens once in a while too, and it's okay because you can just find it on the sprue. Thanks, man. Yeah, this is just the very beginning of a, of a series where we'll build an entire start collecting kit for uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar. So today's episode is about how to build and glue together your first plastic miniatures. And because we want to start with an awesome one, I'm doing the Basilodon. I'll probably glue all the other stuff together off stream just to kind of get that done with. You don't really need, you know, hours and hours of that. But this is a good way to start. So this, it looks like this goes right here. So it fits right over the horn. Yeah, that's cool. All right. And so I will put some glue. There's another little divot there. Just a couple of dots of glue on the outside. So you don't want it squishing out the sides, you know. And then there we go. Let's put that on there. Don't really even need to press it down at all because it's got gravity doing the work for me and it fits so nicely into place that it's going to just stick, you know. And that looks cool anyway. So then there's one more skink to do because, again, we had that hand in the back where the skink is going to be operating the device. Yeah. Let's see, it's 81, 79, and 82. Yeah, it is, it is a lot like Legos. That's that's the thing. Like, if you've done Legos, um, you really this really isn't all that much more complicated. Oh, by the way, if you get some extra glue on the edge of this metal thing, you just run your fingernail up it, and then you can just kind of pull that, see, pull that glue right off of there, and do that once in a while to clean it. There we go. Just to make sure the glue keeps flowing properly out of there. All right, which ones did I say I needed? I needed. 81, 79, and 82. Where is it? 81. There it is. All right. Yourself to the river. Thanks for the follow. Red Hessian. Red Hessian? Red Hessian. Thanks for the follow, man. 81, and then 79 and 82. Here's 82. And I'm going to keep my hands over this so it doesn't fly away. There we go. Because those are the type of pieces that want to fly away. And 79, we need the spear as well, yeah. Skinks usually use uh, spears or like dart guns in a lot of cases. I'm not sure how I'm going to build my skinks yet. That's why I'm going to kind of wait to do those. Is There's a lot of different weapon options for just the regular skinks. Um, these guys can just be, uh, there's another units that are just these guys basically. And so you can build them with sort of these like uh, dart guns that have a ranged attack, you can build them with clubs, you can build them with clubs and shields, you can build them with dark guns and clubs, you can build them with dark guns and shields, you can build them in a lot of different configurations. So I gotta figure out what I wanna do before I put that together. Some people just magnetize all those weapons, but I'm too lazy, so I'm just gonna commit, you know? Getting a little bit of sprue stuff off of the tail again. All right. Because this guy is crucial. He's an important dude. And we're going to follow the same strategies with the other two where I'm going to, I'm going to just, actually I'm going to do this first. Let's glue his arm on you can get some glue out of there sometimes you have to shake a little bit well, sometimes remember I said it's good to close it this is why so this is a little bit stopped up right now but I should be able to get a fix because it's only been a little while so All right. Occasionally, you can use these little things to sort of poke the middle out here. But if this doesn't work, then you're going to have to use flame or something. But usually, if it hasn't been too long, this works. Yeah, there we go. See? Yep, it was blocked up. Now the pressure is pushing the glue out. And again, that's a good lesson why it's it's good to close. Um, good to close it sometimes. All right. 
so we'll put an arm on. It's not the end of the world if that happens, obviously, but it can be a little bit irritating. So this is the arm that is activating the device. There we go. And I'll just hold this here for a second. Funny enough, it's the smaller pieces that don't usually want to stay uh, glued sometimes. There we go. Going Coalesced or Starborn? Uh, I'm going to go Starborn with my first army with this. Um, thanks, Arkar. Appreciate that. Because um, I, I like the summoning aspect. I like the magic aspect of it. And my last army with Seraphon was very Soros heavy. So I'm going to go uh, Skink heavy with this one. And so Coalesced, or uh, rather Starborn, made the most sense. So anyway, time to put this on the back and hope and pray that the uh, arm matches up. Mm, let's see. Oh my gosh. It's matching up. Look at that. Perfectly. There we go. Oops. I'm going to tip him back a little bit there. Hopefully you can see that on stream. Yeah. See, he's got his hand there. He's the one activating it. Good for him. And then uh, I'm going to do the spear. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, what I was thinking of doing is um, going through a, doing another little video where I go through my thought process with how I decided to build this army that I'm going to go for. Um, I don't have all the pieces of it yet, but I'm going to kind of buy it as I go along, you know, like build a piece, paint a piece, and then get the next step in the army. But I think it's good if you're going to do an army to have a, a plan ahead of time, you know, which if you're a new player, you know, people at your local GW, your local Warhammer store can help you make that plan, or the manager there can help you make that plan, or you can just go online and find lists as well. I'm going to just bump this into position a little bit here. I'm going to use this to push it a little bit. There we go. And then, yeah. <clears throat> All right. So that's on there. And again, these like spear arms are very finicky right now. Um, but hopefully they'll stay on they should as long as i don't mess with them so i've got one more part to do here and it is the big crystal in the back as you can see so 61 and 60 just two big pieces pretty easy so all these extra pieces here these are all pieces of the these things are all pieces of the other option to uh, build all these snakes and things like that they'll come out of this and so we're not going to worry about that though so I need 65 and, or 61 and 60. So here's 61 right here. And 60 is right here. Again, just to reiterate, cutting away from the piece, you want to leave a little bit on the edges to cut off so you don't end up with like weird awkward angles where uh, things have been cut especially on the surface like a crystal like this thing this gem crystal thing that's supposed to be smooth you want to really make sure you have that be that you know make sure it's all smoothed out let's see so pressing down into the plastic a little bit to try to get as clean of a cut here and this is why having sharp uh, clippers are important too and then I'm gonna use the back of this this is a very fine grain so it's not going to wear too much away. It's just going to smooth it out a little bit. There. And so while there's still a mark there, when I run my finger over it, it's nice and smooth. So when you put the primer paint over it, you're not really going to see that mark anymore. That's the important part. And same with this. Just clipping all the little extra edges off. And then I'm going to sand it down. And where's the flat one? Here it is. Since it's a flat surface like this, I'm going to use this one. 
And these are from uh, Gundam models, these uh, black handled ones. Um, they're a little bit harsher grain, but I like that they've got different shapes, so I, I've been using these for years. These predate my Warhammer hobby. Okay, and so this, uh, let's see, this will go here. You can see there's a, there's a little notch right there, and that's going to line up with a little notch here. So again, if you've got something where you feel like it could go different sides, just take a look, and uh, you'll be able to find exactly how this goes in. So yeah, a little bit of glue on the outside. All right. And there we go. Super neat crystal thing. Uh, it is a Unicorn Clan shirt, that's true. Uh, Monty and I played a lot of uh, Legend of the Five Rings over the last couple of years via LCG. And haven't had as much time for it lately, obviously, with uh, our paths kind of diverging after Overwatch League. But um, we still get together and play it once in a while. So how does this go on? Is there any specific thing? There probably is. Aha, yes. Two notches here and here correspond to these little areas. And as you can see, it's a fairly tenuous connection. But that's for aesthetic effect, so it's OK. So I'm going to just put the paint, not the paint, the uh, glue right there. And then we'll just glue this, fitting it into the notches, and just holding it for a couple seconds. I'm not really pressing it even right now. I'm just holding it there. Yeah. There we go. All right, cool. So as you can see, it's already pretty solid. And there he is. All done. The solar engine with the skinks piloting it, the one in the back pressing the uh, thing to activate it. And so in the game, it would shoot like a beam of energy, like pew, out of there, you know, across the field. Very long range, vaporizing unwary foes using the light of this crystal or whatever. But there's one more step. Got to glue it to the base. Um, sometimes people do really fancy bases with all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, I'm not doing that. I'm just going to do a pretty basic base. So I'm just going to glue it to or glue them to it right away so that uh, I can just play with it, right? So generally when you glue something to a base, it's a good idea to glue it where it's more in the center. You don't want to glue it off to the side here where it's, you know, you have parts hanging off and stuff. Glue it more to like the center or the front. I'm going to glue it towards a little bit more of the front orientation. Because again, in the game, you measure distances from the base. So the less you have sticking out, the easier it is to kind of maneuver things around in the game. So I try to kind of um, do things in a way where there's less little bits and pieces sticking out. So anyway, getting all that on there. A little bit more glue than on the other pieces because this is really what's going to stick them to the base. And then uh, I usually just set it down with a model like this where, you know, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty stable. You know, you've got four legs. And then I kind of just hold it down a little bit there. Make sure it's centered just for, again, aesthetic purposes. Oops, and as you can see, it's gonna, it's gonna slide around a little bit. And the best thing to do, you know, is to just set it somewhere and leave it. So there you go. You can see it's gonna, it's gonna take some time. It's gonna, to really set, but what you can do is, is also add even a little bit uh, more glue here, if I want. Here we go these areas that I know the fit the feet are going to be and then I can just set that on there and let gravity do the rest honestly and if there's any sort of gaps or anything like that then I can just go in and add a little bit of like uh, putty or something like that to fill in the gap and make sure it's working because these feet might not be all totally level when it's all said and done but the best thing to do now is honestly just leave it sit and after a day it should all be on there but I'll turn it over to the side while holding it so you can see. But yeah, that's that's it. That's pretty much it. The solar engine. Yeah, very cool. I'm going to turn him a little bit so he's got more of an even footing on there. There we go. That looks good. I like that. Cool. All right, well, uh, there you have it. Yeah, that's it from start to finish. Building the... Uh, Basilodon with the solar engine. There you go. Yeah. And uh, that, like I said, because I've got uh, the some other stuff to do a little bit later today, that's where we're going to end the stream for today. But thanks for watching, guys. That is the beginning 
of our quest to build and paint an entire start collecting set from Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Boom, there it is. Yep. I'm going to do it all. I'm going to do it all on stream. Um, except I might build the other models on stream, because building is kind of something where it's like, you know how it works now. Hopefully you have a little bit more confidence uh, building your own models and uh, putting your own stuff together. And then after I get everything together, hopefully over the course of the week, uh, next week, ideally, we can start uh, painting things. So yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be it. Um, no, I don't usually paint them before I glue them. Sometimes I do. Uh, like for instance, just as an example, push you out of the way, Basilodon, you're done. This model here, uh, which the base isn't done yet, but this model here, this was done in sub-assemblies where I did paint different parts before I glued it all together. Like I painted all the, uh, I painted all the little guys separately before I glued them in. Um, so yeah, this was, this was all done in sub-assembly, but you don't need to. You definitely don't need to. In fact, I prefer not to because I just like to I just like to have the model on the board and, and get playing with it, right? I just want to like put this guy out there on the board and play, you know, even before he's painted. So um, some people are really obsessive about painting every little thing and then putting it together. I like to just glue it all together, deal with awkward brush angles from time to time. It really doesn't make that much of a difference in my experience, but it's up to you. It's uh, my method is a method. It is not the method. So whatever you feel comfortable with, uh, that's what you should do. Yeah, the Seraphon monsters are a ton of fun. Oh, Crab Clan. All right, I see. Polar opposite to Unicorn Clan, by the way. But uh, anyway, um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's where we're going to end the stream. So thanks for watching, guys. This has been Hobby Table, the first in uh, what will hopefully be a long and uh, fun series, uh, building plastic miniatures, painting plastic miniatures, and getting a lot of people uh, into the hobby. There's no schedule as yet because my schedule is absolutely insane right now. But the goal is going to be to do an episode on Monday or Tuesday of each week. That's that's the goal. I'm going to try to make a schedule, but freelance life honestly makes it very, very difficult to stick to. And, and as much as I love doing this, it's kind of lower on the priority thing as far as scheduling around things goes. So yeah, that's how it has to be. But thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you liked what you saw here, uh, sub to my Twitch channel, follow my uh, social media. There's going to be a lot more stuff because I'm also going to stream. I'm pretty much going to try to stream every day during the week, um, whether it's painting and building or if it's um, playing games like Hearthstone, TFT, I'm going to be doing a lot of that as well. I already was last week. That's going to continue. And uh, yeah, so just uh, thanks for thanks for hanging out. Uh, thanks for watching. And we'll see you. I should, I should come up with a cool tagline or something like, uh, we'll see you at the hobby table next time. No, I'll, I'll think of a better one. All right.